because we used to go looking for these quangdongs. They had a red skin, then a hard nut, and they split that open, and then we get a, a seed out the centre of it, and we'd eat them. And we used to eat all that wild fruit. Apples, yes, and raspberries. We were right beside a little creek, and it was ideal for the raspberries, for irrigation and everything, you know, it was really good. And if we picked so many, we were allowed to go for a swim. <laughs> Such names as uh, Rena de Kennedy's and Stone Pippins and Cleopatra's and Fall Pittons and... Democrats, Sturmers, Cleos. Our fristons and you know, all the old varieties we grew in that orchard. Before we watered, I mean, the fruit could be nearly ripe and you could lay in bed at night of a hot summer's night and you could hear plop, plop, and the fruit would be starting to fall and you know then it was get out and pick them or you were going to lose them. Yes, I, I was along the Murray Valley quite a few times uh, on the, the, the grape harvest. Oh, yes. Very few people, I think, realised that there was a, a very small, very early vineyard right within the ACT. At that time, there was an acre of grapes at Narrabunda. The Italians, who actually ran the, uh, the vineyard, had a very big, very spacious cellar underneath with running water and a stream that was trained to come in there. It had uh, piping to a, a location where they could squash the grapes and then they could send the juice down into the cellar uh, after it was fermented. Well, the fruit comes from the orchard and it goes into the cool stores in the cannery. And in the front of the cannery, there's a huge space where all the cutters, that is the girls that peel and cut the, the fruit into halves, you know, with the peaches, they cut them in half to get the nut out. They're oh, on there, they're, the women, they're, they're absolutely incredible. They have a knife and they whip it around the peach, then they have a spoon with a sharp point on the end. They whip it into the uh, peach, pull the nut out, and then the peach falls in half. So you can watch them for hours. In those days, he, he, he grew uh, varieties that suited the English palate because there was a very low population in Australia and they had to export to England uh, their crop. We shipped to England and to Europe because of the off-season because we didn't have CA stores in those days and when they finished their crops ours came up in our autumn and their winter. We used to send most of the small varieties to England because they used to like them for their children, put them in their dinner for school and that type of thing. They used to take them down to the wharf at Ermington and uh, uh, barge the fruit to Circular Quay. That was how they used to get the fruit to the quay before the railways. On with your pulling shirts, get the peaches in. There's 20 to the half case and 40 to the gin. Take them down to Ermington, stick them on the barge, half ripes and mediums, and extra bloody large. <laughs> 